All right, just as a bit of an intro for this movie, a little bit different than the way I've done the other ones, but I thought for the slideshow it might make a little bit more sense. I got a uh, ledger, ledger book from the house, and uh, I had seen this ledger book before because actually it used to be in my possession. I forget when it was, but maybe the mid-2000s or something like that, I had wrapped it up and sent it back to Dad for Christmas or his birthday or something like that, just for, uh, you know, memory's sake and all that. Yeah, there was a bunch of things in here I had totally forgotten about, and so when I got them back, uh, yeah, I ran them all through the scanner this afternoon, and um, yeah, I found some neat things. I'm attempting to keep this uh, pretty much focused on automobile and motorcycle type stuff. It's mostly receipts and stuff like that. There was other pictures uh, crammed in the back of it, but uh, I'll save those for some other project. So the first one here is a uh, pit pass ticket, 1969 Nationals at Indy, which is kind of like the uh, Super Bowl, the Kentucky Derby, and everything else combined uh, when it comes to drag racing, this is it. Uh, it pretty much still is. Dad used to often go down to Indy with his cousin Bob Ferguson. But in 1969, I don't know whether they did that year together or not, but I, I do know in previous years, I was told that they did go down, I think it was 65 and 66 or something like that, that were the other years. I didn't find any other tickets except this one as yet. But uh, in 1969, Don the Snake Prudhomme, won the uh, top fuel, and uh, it was uh, Danny on Gaius in the uh, funny cars. So pretty famous names. Here's an automobile insurance form. Uh, this is for 52 Norton. And this being 64, that would have been an earlier Norton. He had another one at some point. And uh, we'll see later that there's a couple of other bikes that come up here. $37 a year. It's probably higher because it's a bike. So here in 1961, there was a couple of notes here. Um, that's a 35 Plymouth. And uh, even though I don't see an engine in that particular picture right there, um, he says the first engine was a 47 Fargo. This would be over at the um, house on Bay Street before moving to uh, Canal. Jump to winter time. Oh, see the hood back on, and probably, yeah, there's a tarp there. Fit some engine in there. If this is still 61, then presumably it would be this Fargo engine he was talking about. But once we get into the next couple of pictures there, there's a different. Uh... Yeah, so these 1964 ones, he indicates uh, still 35 Plymouth but with a 48 mercury frame uh, channeled by 13 inches, which is pretty extreme. Forty-nine uh, Merck rear end and a 53 Studebaker transmission with overdrive. So that would be the same setup as described. I don't know if it went. Wayne Burt could probably tell me uh, whether he saw that one on the road or not. So here's some of the first pages in the ledger. You can see how ridiculously awesome the pricing of stuff was back in the day. I mean, the whole car was $40. License and registration 13. Yeah, there you see the uh, 51 Studebaker transmission, $15. 48 Merck front end. Ooh, Hollywood mufflers, five bucks. I was paying that today for car parts, or cars for that matter. There's a second page later on, which I assume he wanted to clean up a little bit and show some other things. 
because it looks to be essentially the same list as the last one. But he bought from Grandpa a 47 Dodge engine, 10 bucks. And there's where the 51 Studebaker. Oh, with new bearings, huh? basically rebuilt. What's that? 100 bucks. That's the most expensive thing yet. Fifty two Norton, which I think was his first one. Look at that insurance and plates together is seven bucks more than the whole bike. And then fifty one aerial. Nineteen fifty one Monarch. Monarch essentially a Canadian version of the standard Mercury. I think they were primarily identical. They may have had different trim levels and slightly different things, but I think mechanically they were the same. Bunch of gas prices there, you can only imagine how many gallons he's buying for three bucks. Here's a list of the uh, labor time and expenditures for, um, I think it was Grandpa and Dad both working it, but they were doing a welding business off to the side, I think. Coming up with some uh, receipts for gas and rods. At this point, Dad seemed to still be using some script and then getting into writing in full caps and stuff like he did later in life but um so occasionally it's hard to tell it looked like you know dad and grandpa might have been using the same book at one point to keep track of things all right here's the purchase of a 51 aerial in 1967 which i believe to be the same bike that um, used to live in the garage of my uh, childhood home this was a bike that uh, peter craddock still uh, Talks about and lusts after. He'd probably buy it today if we knew where it was. I think it went with the house purchase. This one's interesting. I didn't know anything about this car, but uh, or not about Dad's ownership of it, but uh, 1963 Mercury Meteor. I love the look of those cars. They're totally fantastic. Two-door hot job. Look the mileage. 3,650 miles. I can do that in two months. Don't know much about this 1953 Oldsmobile. Don't know if he wanted parts from it or whether he drove it as is or what the scoop in 63. Uh, well, we saw those pictures from 64 or whatever, but I don't see it in the background or anything. Like that. I'm just not sure what it was. Wayne might know about that too. One Ford Motor. Looks to be 75 bucks, which would be kind of expensive compared to the other. I don't know what it would be if it, it has to be a flathead. I'm not sure what else it could be. Maybe it was partially rebuilt or something, and hence the uh, higher price. So here are uh, this uh, Templeton Brothers Texaco. These were the receipts uh, written out to uh, Ross Bennett, and they seem to primarily be all for gas and welding rods. They seem to span from 64 to 66. You know, this one's interesting. This is, uh, he started a reply to a uh, job position at a machine shop somewhere in town. Doesn't have the name on it or anything. I would have liked to have seen the, uh, I would have liked to have seen the full letter. 20 years of age at this point. Anyway, that's uh, this batch of automotive and motorcycling related things. thought it was kind of interesting. Like I say, I was familiar with some of them, but uh, some of the other ones I'd forgotten totally about. There's probably some people out there that know some corrections to the uh, whatever information I had to work with, but uh, yeah, I thought people 
like to get a chance to see it. Thank you for watching.